Are you ready to start automating your home like a real nerd? I mean, like you're from the future? Contact sensors are going to be one of the biggest upgrades that you're gonna utilize whenever you're building your smart home. Before we jump into today's video, I want to start with a refresher. This is going to be the next installment in how to build a smart home. First, we've already gone through what smart switches are and voice assistants are. We've also taken a moment and dived into Wi-Fi routers, one of the most powerful tools in ensuring the success of your smart home. If you haven't taken a moment to go ahead and watch those videos, I highly encourage you to watch them as all of these videos are gonna work very, very well together. They're all in a playlist on my channel, so take a quick moment, click on the playlist, and go ahead and watch the videos in order on how I've placed them in the playlist. If you haven't seen the links on screen already, go ahead and click the link you're gonna go ahead and be taken to that playlist now. Today, we're gonna to be talking about contact sensors, the third item that you should be purchasing when building out a smart home. Voice assistants were first, light switches and light bulbs were second, and then now contact sensors. The Wi-Fi router isn't how you build the smart home, it's just a tool utilized to empower your smart home. So why are contact sensors third? For one, you need the power of your voice assistant to be able to start automating some of the things throughout your home. We are automating those things through light switches and light bulbs. You'll get your first taste on how to set up automations through sun rising and sun setting and various times throughout the day when you need your lights to turn on or off. It also teaches you how to utilize them through voice as well as on your phone. Contact sensors honestly are almost useless if you don't have some other type of smart tech to be able to utilize them with. In this case, we're gonna be using them with our smart switches or smart bulbs, whichever one you might have, or if you have both, awesome. A couple other reasons as to why contact sensors are third is they're still fairly easy to set up and utilize. So we're still in the basics of how to build a smart home and getting used to our smart home. We don't wanna dump super advanced technology on you and really confuse you and discourage you from building your home out further. This happened to me, I jumped into some things that were really confusing, and now it's been hard to get back in and really help build out the smart home in the direction that I would like it to go. What's also really great is when you have these contact sensors in place, they're very easy to build upon. So when you do get to deeper levels or higher levels of your smart home, you can utilize these to help build your smart home into an even better smart home. Contact sensors are pretty simple. All it really is, is a magnet inside of two different devices. So whenever the magnets are close together, you have a big one and a small one. When they're close together, they register that they're closed. But when those magnets get too far apart, they register that they're open. This could do many different things for you. Whenever the status of the device is registered as open, it can trigger various automations that you've set up. When it registers as closed, it can also register other automations for you. You can also set time limits so that whenever the door closes, it doesn't just automatically turn off the lights for you. Maybe there's a three or five or 10 minute delay before those lights are turned off. Or maybe you've already dived into motion sensors and those motion sensors detect motion so it knows not to turn off those lights for you. Now, what exactly could contact sensors be used for? Where would you put them? Well, there's two main places that you're gonna put them, either on a door or a window. Now there are other things you could utilize them for. I've even considered putting my wife's medication that she sometimes takes or her vitamins inside her armoire and putting contact sensors inside the armoire doors so that whenever they're closed for a certain amount of time, it gives that notification that, hey, you haven't taken your vitamins today or your medication today. Other places you can utilize them for is maybe the snack cabinet or the pantry. My pantry, for instance, has a light inside of it and I am always either forgetting to turn on the light or forgetting to turn the light off. So it'd be really great is when you open that pantry door, the light automatically turns on for you. When you close the pantry door, the light automatically turns off. Simple as that. Another place you could put it is on windows. Now this is gets really unique and we're gonna dive further into this when we get into our thermostat video. But if you've already got a smart thermostat, 
you can actually set up these contact sensors so that when certain windows are open for certain amounts of time, that it will tell your heating system to turn off. There's no reason to be spending money to be able to heat the inside of the house or cool the inside of the house if the windows are open. But again, maybe you don't want it to do it automatically. Maybe you want a reminder that that window has been left open for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes and that you need to close it. Contact sensors can also be utilized in these same places, whether it be doors or windows, to help with a security system. If certain windows or doors are opened after a certain time or before a certain time in the morning, then you're going to get notified and it can trip your security alarm. You've probably seen these most commonly used when you reach out to some of these large security system companies that are offering home security systems. A lot of times they're offering you contact sensors as well to put on your windows and your doors to help trip the alarm. What's also really great is you can set these contact sensors to connect directly to your voice assistant. So whenever a door is opened or a window is opened, you can actually have your voice assistant announce to all the devices that that door or window has been opened, or maybe only specific ones. Have a child that you don't want to leave at a certain time, or maybe you've got a toddler, like I do, that likes to start opening doors. We've put the little safety things in place, but it's only a matter of time before she figures her way around them. Some additional places that you can put your contact sensors are also on closets. If you've got a large walk-in closet that already has a light built in, you can easily set it up there so that your light turns on when you go in the closet. Or maybe you've got those old school bifold doors. I guess they're not old school. My house is fairly new. I have them. But anyways, you've got those bifold doors and when those separate, you can have lights turn on there as well. Now, you might need to actually set up lights in there, whether it be an LED light strip or other, other type of light, but there's all different options to be able to turn on lights or turn off lights whenever you open doors. This is one of my favorite things to do with contact sensors because it's so simple and so convenient. And in the end, you're saving a lot of money because you're not forgetting to turn lights off. Or you've got children that like to leave the lights on and so they won't forget to turn off the lights. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind whenever you're starting to build automations is the KISS principle. You might've heard this from somebody else before, but KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, it stands for keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, keep it simple, stupid. The reason why is when we make these automations, especially in the beginning, when we're first learning too complex, then we get burned out on building out these automations and then we overthink them, overanalyze them, and never put automations in place. So keep it simple. A door opens, a door closes, something happens. That's all it needs to be. Maybe something opens and an announcement is made. Something opens, a notification is sent. That's all you need to do in the beginning when it comes to contact sensors. We'll talk later on how you can build upon these, but for now, keep it simple, stupid. Now there's some additional things to consider whenever you're buying contact sensors. You could tell that if you have a lot of doors, a lot of windows, and all the things I've already covered as to what you can do with them, you're going to need a lot of contact sensors in your house or potentially, I wouldn't say need, there's a chance that you're going to need a lot. Just think about all the windows that open on the main level of your home. If you've got a ranch style home, you've got even more windows. If you've got a two story, you have less that you need to cover to be able to set up a regular or basic style home security system. Contact sensors can range anywhere from $5 up to 15, 20. I've even seen them go as high as $30 before. I always caution people about purchasing the most inexpensive product, but I never wanna encourage you to purchase the most expensive product. You wanna find the middle ground that has the most features for what you're gonna utilize it for. Akara makes some really great sensors because you can buy them in packs of three, but sometimes these contact sensors also come with additional features. Most contact sensors just have the ability to open or close. Some contact sensors have the ability to detect vibration, humidity, and even temperature. Depending on where you're putting your contact sensor is gonna determine if you need to spend the extra money to be able to purchase those specific style sensors. For instance, if you're gonna put this on a bedroom, if you wanna turn on your light every time the bedroom door is open, then you actually might wanna consider purchasing one that also has temperature and humidity built in because you wanna help create a balanced environment in your home when it comes to your heating system. So being able to average all of the rooms in your home 
on temperature and only tell your thermostat to turn on when those temperatures or that average temperature drops below a certain amount, then you want those style contact sensors because you're gonna need those types of sensors and you're not gonna spend the extra money to go buy a temperature sensor down the road. Now, some thermostats come with their own specialized one and we're not gonna get too far into that. We're gonna have a whole video on thermostats later. I wanna make it clear because you're considering the purchase now and I wanna give you this information up front. Now, if you're just putting this on an armoire, like I discussed, as a place to take your vitamins, then you only need one that can open and close because you just need it to be able to read a status or state of open and close. And then from there, that information could be sent off to give you the notification that you need to be able to run those automations. Keep in mind, you're not required to buy the contact sensors all from one brand. You can mix and match them depending on price based on what you need them for. Most contact sensors are gonna be wireless. They're gonna come with a small little puck style battery and they're gonna last for somewhere between six months and a year. So the battery life isn't all too important because most of them are gonna be the same. The thing to keep in mind is the price for features that you're gonna be getting. Before you purchase, plan out where you're gonna be putting sensors so that you can buy sensors for what you need them for. Again, if you're gonna be putting them in bedrooms and you're gonna need temperature sensors in the future in those places, it might be worth it to spend the extra couple dollars to get a contact sensor that has those features built in. But again, if you're just doing it to open and close a door in a pantry or something, then there's no need to spend the extra money. Again, some of the ones I like are the Acara ones. I've also seen the third reality ones that are pretty good in price because they're super inexpensive but you get a lot of bang for your buck because you can buy them in multiple packs. Take some time, look on Amazon. I'm gonna put some links on ones that I found that I like in the description below for you to check them out. Again, keep in mind with these videos, you can purchase your devices in any order you want. This is a way to say, if I were to build a new smart home today, what order would I purchase my devices in? How would I build out my smart home and how would I plan for it? So I wanted to walk you through some of the basics of what these different devices are. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned something. Drop a link down below on what contact sensors you might have used. Tell me about a special automation that you can use your contact sensor for. I'd love to hear what you're doing to build your smart home. If you enjoyed today's video, please, as always, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It means a lot. Share this with a friend. I cannot express to you how much it means whenever people share my videos and subscribe. This is how I grow my channel and how I know what you guys like and don't like. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.